Okay, so it's a beautiful morning. I'm waiting for Fran here at the jetty. She's gonna park the trailer. And yeah, we're gonna try on Swarkup's Estuary. Um, I think we're just gonna familiarize ourselves with the place and show you guys around. Hopefully catch some fish on Lua. We're just fishing Lua. And yeah, we might do some bait collection just to show you what cool things you can get out of this river, but yeah, we're gonna try for maybe some granters, Larry's, and the elusive ladyfish. So yeah, stay tuned. It's gonna be a cool day. I thought I'd give you a tour of the peanut butter falcon. <laughs> so in the front, we have a beautiful standing platform for lures. We have one times anchor, lure box, it's a must. This is your air hostess for the day, her name's Wolfie. She's a bit cheeky, but she's actually not bad at her job. Then we have our another magic machine called the fish finder. It's a goodie. This thing tells the boat where to go, and this thing tells the boat how fast to go. And then yeah, we've got an assortment of rods, holes for sneaking up on granters and getting off the sandbags, tying stuff, and very important, a landing net. And we make sure that ours is extra, extra large, you know? I'm leaving the jetty. Okay, bye! South Africa is fortunate enough to have 290 estuaries, including estuaries from over 22 different types. Everything from these tiny systems running through the dunes of the Transkei to these massive systems like the Breda, which are more adequately described as arms of the sea because they're just the sea extended inland. The Swarkops is described as a permanently open estuary and we actually have very few permanently open estuaries in the country. And it's probably the fact that this system is permanently open that keeps its low stretches so productive. The Swarkops has always baffled me because it is absolutely hammered by recreational and subsistence anglers, diggers for bait, the banks get dug up almost every day. It has so much pressure but yet remains to produce some amazing fish all year round. Further up the Swakops, you start seeing a really disgusting sight. I don't think many of us actually get to see it. It's heavily polluted. There is litter as far as the eye can see and the water actually bubbles. It's a different color, it smells, it's disgusting. And life just disappears the further up river you go. But here in the lower reaches, you can still have some amazing fishing, whether it's Larry's or Skippy's. But the one thing that makes Swakop so special are the grunters. The spotted grunters in this system are massive and numerous. First <coughs> cast in front is already showing me up. <laughs> it's going. <laughs> Did you see it? No, I didn't. What the f is that? Oh, it's a double up. We don't know what to do here. <laughs> um, fast. Well, dogs losing her mind. Was on. Absolute mayhem. Crazy. Very broad. He's like, this has never happened before. <laughs> Chaos! What is this? Just gave me a fright, that's all. <laughs> An A tag. <laughs> it's a skippy, oh my god! <laughs> oh. 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 
Bobby's like, oh my god, I can see it. Uh oh. Skippies really have a way of hurting my feelings. I don't know what it is. I don't know what I ever did to them. are also quite cool creatures. Most of you know, I'm sure they um, breed for life. So they're monogamous. So a male will find a female and they'll breed for life. And it's actually very difficult to tell the difference between a male and a female. But there is one thing. A female oyster catcher has a little black dot in its eye. Not like you'll ever get that close that you can tell male from female by looking into an oyster catcher's eye. But um, you can see it on some really amazing photos. Everyone's actually here, I'm sure. Um, my mom got an absolute snorter the other day. It was giant. Hey, that? Absolutely giant. On a little olive bucktail and on a supernova, I think she had a jaw of a time. No idea what this is. It's not slow for a game. How is this thing sticking down there like this? I'm gonna switch it back! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it's fucking tight! <laughs> what is this? It's like an 80 dollar thing in a grand slab, it's fucking tight! Jesus, are you not seeing it? I can't see oh it! Oh my god! <laughs> Just take it out. <laughs> yes, I see something. It's not a cob. No, it's a cruncher. I see spots. No way. It's giant. It is giant. We can't. It's tail. Oh, it's a oh, it's a cruncher. <laughs> oh, I might have a better angle. It's huge. <laughs> 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 I saw you walking 
Oh my goodness gracious, that thing is I huge. got butterflies. Oh wow. Hey. Oh, I never thought I would see a small A tag on a Granta. There's a buck tail down there. <laughs> Die. Thanks, buddy. good net. This is a nice net. It's like this rubbery, almost, what would you call it? Silicon. Yeah. It's like a silicon based net and it's so gentle on their skin and they don't get those bad marks from the net and that. And obviously you can breathe. We also have this bucket on the boat that we take with us on every fishing trip and it just gives us more time to work with the fish, tag him, make sure he's really strong and doesn't become a snack for someone on the way out. So we're going to tag him. So it's also good when handling fish to have a wet shark, especially with grand time. I mean, they're so prickly and spiky. Okay, so now he's in the bucket. That's, this class actually makes a big difference. If you cover a fish's eyes, they don't stress as much. If they don't stress, they don't jump. If they don't jump, they don't hurt yourself, themselves and you. So it makes a big difference. Oh, it's a goodie. Obviously known for that grunting sound. <laughs> so that's the sound of their pharyngeal teeth. It's these set of teeth that they have in the back of their throat, grinding against itself. So there was an interesting study done a while ago. It hasn't. I don't think it's been followed up on. But this one girl, she looked at grunters in different estuaries, and she used a hydrophone to record the grunts they made. And then she looked at them. For and it suggested that grunters actually um, from different rivers almost have a different language. So their grunts are different depending on the rivers they come from. And because they're resident um, to that estuary and we keep coming back to that estuary, it almost makes sense that they would almost have some separation between the rivers. So I think that's very cool. So this guy sounds like he's a Swakops grunter. I think he's been here a while. And um, yeah, it's beautiful. If you want to be a responsible angler, go sign up with the RE tagging program, cooperative fish tagging program. But also, I suggest that all taggers, because you're responsible for this animal and you are putting something in their body, please familiarize yourself with the RE tagging manual. We see so much on social media, people arguing about angles and places and terrible tags that honestly just look like they hurt the fish. Okay, so he is 60 on the dot. So if a fish is 60 or over, you use an A tag, which is the bigger tag. You take, the whole point of this barb is to sit between these pterygophores, which are these extensions of the fin, and it hooks on that. So what you want to do, you want to take a scale off, put it in, twist it so the barb catches, and pull it out. The angle that you want is 45 degrees, so that it doesn't chafe on the fin or chafe on the body when it gets growth on it. These are Hermulas. So it's a different family to the Steenies. So they look like Steenies, but they're actually not related. The Steenies are part of a much slower growing family. Whereas these guys actually grow relatively fast. So the oldest one has been record to, recorded to 16 years. And they'll start breeding at around 35 to 40 total, if I'm not mistaken. And yeah, whereas the steenies on the other hand, they're much slower growing. So 
a Steny of 45 total is already four years old because they're part of that sparrow family which is much slower growing. But that said, they are harvested quite heavily in this river by subsistence and recreational guys. And it's really important that we look after them because they're just so much fun to catch, especially on lure. Double up grunters on surface lure. Don't say it's over. Soon I'm never gonna let you go. Don't you say it. <laughs> Over. Never gonna let you go. Ain't much, but it's honest work. <laughs> Surface lure fishing for spotted grunters is next level fun if you're looking for something that's challenging and super exciting. And it's all about rhythm. It's the tick, tuck, tick, tuck, tick, tuck. Boom. But most of the time they miss. And sometimes they don't miss. And it's just super rewarding. But you got lost all on your own again. Don't you ever ask me how I feel? Looking for someone to go. super busy day we've had quite a few bites it's been slow in between i think front and i have had a fun day yeah yeah <laughs> so we're going to continue hopefully we get another grunter maybe a skippy before that wind picks up but yeah i think then we call it a day it's been quite a quite a good one we all know that ecosystems exist on this delicate balance of so many factors that I think we're still yet to fully understand. And although the Swakops can take all this pressure for now, I do fear that there will come a day where we will shift that balance to a point of no return and we will struggle to rehabilitate a system like this because you just don't get many systems like the SWAT Corps that can operate under such pressure, slap bam in the middle of a city. I often get asked, I bring up all these depressing facts and highlight all these things that we should all be focusing on, the bare rotten truth. And then people always ask me, what are we gonna do about it? What can we do? Well, how, can, how do we make a better viv? And how? I honestly, I wish I had a clear cut answer for you, but the way we have our environment now in the country is really just a symptom of much bigger problems. I mean, we could clean up the upper reaches of Swakops from all the plastic pollution and tomorrow it will be there again, you know? Us sitting in our suburban homes, reusable shopping bags, avoiding single use plastic is one thing, but the informal settlements around these systems, I mean, they have next to zero service delivery. They're not gonna worry about single use plastic. They have no one to help improve their quality of life and the industry's not gonna care about polluting the waterways that run through their homes. And that's the country's problem. That's when the environment takes a back seat. The system in place that preaches conservation and water quality and improvement of lives, and it's just not working right now. But I guess every little drop leads through a river and into the ocean. So every little thing that we can do and can promote will hopefully try to treat the main, the main problem and we can start really looking after our environment. Why does my soul feel so dead? Why does my heart